the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show with Billy the Kid and Scott Tang. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show! It's the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah? yeah. It's the Bill and Scott Cubicle, Cubicle Show. Show. Yeah! What up? I'm Scott. And I'm Bill. And this is the, the Bill and Scott, Scott Cubicle Show. Show. Season 3 premiere, a.k.a. the woke season <laughs> all right so we are up here um so season three we're going to explore new areas and we are going to find our location for season four in season three because season three is only going to be a couple weeks because i'm going on vacation like a month you know what i mean okay speaking of finding things i gotta go find the paper that I left at my desk. Why don't you that go I'm do that? And I'll get me Monday. And I'll here. So we got a lot going on today. We're going to get into uh, Drake's new album. How uh, he just set a crazy record. We'll let you know all about that. Why you can once again hate on LeBron James. If you had no more reasons to hate on him. Maybe you got a new reason now to hate on him. The number one movie right now in the theaters. Because uh, Movie Pass Bill is back. So we'll get him in on that. Uh, Google may be putting out this new gaming console. So we'll uh, talk about that. And of course... Roseanne Bard from TV. But is she really? Because uh, it looks like Roseanne may be coming back to a network near you. <laughs> wow, that was great because I just got done wrapping it all up. Perfect. Okay, let's start it off with a drape right now since this is kind of the big, big thing people are kind of talking about. Drake's album, Scorpion, comes out last Friday. Double album. Uh... <sighs> It racked up more than 170 million streams on Apple Music in its first day, uh, which is a record. It racked in, brought in another uh, 120 million streams in the first 12 hours first on Spotify. 12 hours, that's only a half a day. And uh, it was also mentioned more than uh, 3 million times on Twitter in its first full day. So basically, uh, Drake puts out this album. He, uh, he has a special feature from Michael Jackson. What? Is this a feature from Beyond the Grave? Yeah. Who's Michael's father? Uh, his name is Jackson. Joe Jackson. Real, real who passed man, away Joe last, Jackson. Who passed away last week? Was it Joe Jackson? Right, and to steal this joke from somebody on Twitter, somebody was like, yo, Joe Jackson died and got up to heaven and was like, Michael, get back to work. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I like, yo, I wish I thought that That's a good that joke. It's real good. <laughs> and so he got back to work and he landed on Drake's album. So there's that feature. There's a Jay-Z feature, which is pretty interesting as well. Um, because they've had their little back and forths. And uh, he also does claim his son, Adonis, on the album too. Emotionless. Has Mariah Carey. Uh, sample. Let me tell you something real quick. It, it's hot out here. Yeah. Because it's hot outside and we're right near the door. I don't know how wise of a decision this was because I am about to be shimmering. Yeah, if we went into soon. the studio, I think it would have been a lot cooler. I might be a puddle of goo by the time this freaking episode is over. Now, my Meme Monday, actually, just as a prelude here, I have two Meme Mondays, but one of them ties into Drake being mentioned three million times on Twitter because, spoiler alert, it's a Drake mention on no. Twitter. So we'll get to that in a little bit. My I mean, Meme has to do with Drake as well, too. Uh, the number one album this week, I bet you can guess what it was. What is it? It's Panic at the Disco. Pray for the Wicked by Panic at the Disco. That was my whole setup today. I was like, ooh, Drake was not the number one album, and I'll tell you why. And it's because it hasn't been out for a week yeah. yet. So <laughs> that'll be next week's number one album. Oh, man. Which it also, a lot of people were like all bragging about the Beyonce and Jay-Z album, too, the that Carters. came out two weeks ago. But uh, Five Seconds of Summer actually outperformed them in really? the first week, too. Oh. So, um, the new, what's the new... Um, Wild Heart or Dark Heart or something. I don't know what the new, new album from Five Seconds of Summer is called. Whatever that song is, that that's a self-entitled track. Uh, see, so whatever it is, I don't know what it's called. I know that I talked it, into it a few times on the point. Beat Slaughter. <laughs> <laughs> Beat Slaughter album number five. Yo, shout that's out my Darcy. guy Beat Slaughter. Oh, man. I put, yeah, you know about Beat Slaughter. Yeah, you okay, showed me Beat God, Slaughter yeah. and his... Um, his art. I was going to say, if I didn't show you about Beats Letter, I failed the people. <laughs> I um, wasn't convinced it wasn't beat, Beats Laughter, but I feel like I feel like if that guy is legit, then maybe he doesn't realize that, but if he's a troll, then he probably put that together. No, he's... he's uh, you, think he's, you think he's a real, like, he's a tryhard? He's like, yeah. he's, in, he's in the game for he's the no of the game? He's no Andy Kaufman. Okay. Let's just put it that way. Oh, I, I feel. You ever heard that Andy Kaufman song, I Trusted You? Oh, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> okay. I just want to know because I think that song is really funny. You ever hear the album where Andy Kaufman just pranks people on the phone? No. <laughs> is that that's a real thing? Yeah. I need to, I need to check that no, out. No, there's a lot of great stuff. Oh. Uh, so LeBron James made a big announcement yesterday that <laughs> is sure to make people mad because no matter what LeBron James does, he just angers people. He's a very polarizing figure, and he gets a lot of hate, and I don't really understand it. Neither much. do I. Shout out, uh, Lori, uh, Andrea, Darcy, Stan Lee. What up, everybody? Um, yeah, so he signed with the LA uh, Lakers for four years, $154 million, which I think is cool. The one thing I will say is that I like that Cleveland this time isn't burning freaking jerseys. Like, he came back, he got you a, uh, a championship. Let's be real. Who wants to live in Cleveland, Ohio? <laughs> Have you ever seen the Cleveland Holy Tourism, the hastily crap. made Cleveland Tourism video? What, is to go see every single LeBron James statue? It's, it's, I'll have to show it to you later because it's really funny. Maybe we'll put it in the, in the links down below because it is quite funny. Here's the thing. Cleveland actually offered LeBron James more money. So if anybody's like, oh, he just left to take the money, they offered him a five-year deal for $205 million. Um, what he took, like the $154 million over four years, that comes out to about $38 million a year. The other one came out to... Um, Looks like about a little, a little more than 40. So he's leaving about $50 million on the table to go to L.A. And I think, personally, it seems like Cleveland fans are a lot less butthurt this time around. You mentioned yeah. the championship. The last time there was a championship in Cleveland before 2016 was the 1964 wow. Browns. And that was before it was even called the Super Bowl. So, um, but I think he should be able to go. Wherever he wants to go. If he here's, wants to play somewhere, let him go. Well, here's it. a big thing. His son is going to college like just outside of L.A. Oh, well, so it's like you're going to be closer with your family, yeah. like your son, who's like the number one prospect in America. Also, like, like I don't understand why people, like, people be like, oh, LeBron James cries, carry about every single call. You know what? What other player does it? Look at Steph Curry. He's one of the biggest babies in the freaking league. Kevin Durant left a team to go play for the Warriors because he knew he'd never get to the NBA Finals again. But also, here is my biggest thing, right? LeBron James is sick and tired of losing in the NBA Finals. It basically tells you whoever's in the West is going to win the NBA Finals. LeBron James going to the West now allows him to, if he goes to the Finals, he's probably going to win because the East sucks so much. But now, at least he'll lose in the semifinals so he doesn't have to take all these L's in the championship, you know what I mean? I see you get it. So, because he's like three and five right now. Three championships, five losses in the finals. I don't know anything about actual basketball. But what I do know... Do you know that they dribble? I do. <laughs> I know that and I okay. hate it. I hate that about basketball. It's so hard. I cannot dribble to save my life. You could just run up. You could just tear up and down the court and just launch the ball. That would be, that'd be my jam. Darcy, thanks uh, for watching. Hopefully you don't get yelled at for laughing at the desk because usually we get yelled at for being loud at our desks. I compare this. Yeah, much love. Yeah, actually, we'll get back to that in a second. But I compare this to Derek Jeter, right? You know, like, people are like, oh, LeBron's from Cleveland. He should be playing in Cleveland. You know where Derek Jeter freaking grew up? Kalamazoo, Michigan. You want him playing for the Tigers? No. That's Michigan's only baseball team. What kind of world would it be where Derek Jeter was the captain of the Tigers? A stupid, dumb world. And we're headed that way anyway with this heat wave. And all this stuff about Roseanne Barr. We, we forgot to hit him with the LeBron. Oh, wait, do you have the audio? Oh, no, it's a picture. LeBron. Oh, yeah, no, I don't know. I just wanted to hit the stay woke for like that long. <laughs> Sorry, my apologies. Wait, wait, what were you stay woke in it? Um, about why would you want Derek Jeter to be oh, yeah, playing yeah. for the Tigers? Why would you want Derek Jeter to play for the Tigers? Hit it again. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> Yo, this is. This episode's so uh, old, there's an episode yo, within the episode. Yo, shout out Jimmy for tuning on in. The best thing that he does, he's like, did I hear some of Did I hear some <laughs> Beat Slaughter? <laughs> yo. Yo, Beat Slaughter's getting so much promo, we need to interview this dude. <laughs> can we bring him in? Can we have him sit down as the guest yeah. on the Cubicle Show? Jimmy, can you set up the link to, so we can interview Beat Slaughter on the Cubicle Show? Please. Jimmy is the inside to that. All right, so what was the number one movie at the box office this past weekend? Movie Pass Bill, would you inform us, please? Sounds like it was Jurassic World, although I do want to distance myself from Movie Pass because, A, they don't endorse me and they never have, and B, their service quality keeps declining. So from now on, I would like to be referred to as the esteemed cinema-goer, William. Thank you. 
Dude, I just came up with please that. Please get B-Slaughter on the show, yo. He's, yo, B-Slaughter, <laughs> when we bring B-Slaughter, to the people that don't know about B-Slaughter, when he arrives, you will be blown away. Will, will, you be, will we be slain? You will be slain, beats? yes. Um, so, yeah, Jurassic World. What about Movie Pass? I'm sorry. Oh, I just um, saw all these Beat Slaughter comments. I just coming. don't. You know, they're firing up. Beat Slaughter's got a lot of fans. Dude, <laughs> is, that, is that the press we need to really make it to the big beat time? Slaughter. That's like our, our breakthrough moment when we get Beat Slaughter. Out. Tomorrow I'll play, you, I'll play you a clip of Beat Slaughter tomorrow on the Cubicle the Show. The Beat Slaughter stands yeah. that get us trending on Twitter. Oh, Ooh. man. Never even thought of this. Use the connections where you got them, kids. Um... Yeah, Movie oh, Pass yeah. is doing a bunch of uh, yeah, they, BS. They don't, they don't, like, it's not like I endorse them. They don't pay me to talk about them. I pay for their service, and I liked it, but it just keeps getting worse. They keep adding more restrictions, and they're adding fees on, and now it's like Regal at Colony Center is going to be doing assigned seating. Actually, so, I, I do actually like that a lot, to be honest with I you. Know. And this weekend was a prime example of why I liked it, too. Is it, is it already in effect? Yeah. Oh, that's stupid. No, I hate it. No, well, what you do is, like, you go, and it's just like, so if you go there and you got there early anyways, like to get your seats, you're still going to be able to get the same seats as if you get there early, but it benefits people that like, so say if I go and I get tickets, like this weekend I went with like my cousins and like brother and uncle and stuff to see Jurassic World. I got seven seats, right? I was there. I went and I got the seats. I got all seven seats in a row. And then I stood outside for like 20 minutes after I got the tickets waiting for like my brother and cousins to show up and stuff and nobody had to go in and get our seats and everything because they're already there and then when we went in to get our seats like you know there's still time left people are still coming into the movie you didn't have to leave a code or anything on the seats to say the seats assigned well you went out to go get your drinks or whatever so you got your seats if you get there early to movies anyways you're gonna be straight also if you want ahead of time you just go and you freaking get your seats like two hours before I yeah. like it. Here's the problem with that, though. Damn, Is I that, just endorsed the hell out of them, and I got did, no money. Did you did you buy all the tickets at once? Yeah. That's the problem. With MoviePass, you buy one ticket at a time. Everybody has their own account, and everybody has to get the, yeah, their Yeah, but you see like what seats are like available, so you can pick it. Yeah, sure, but what if you can't all get to the theater at the same time? Well, then you just order yours online. Just do you it right there online. You can't do that with you gotta be at the theater. You gotta be within. Well, that's yards. a that's a movie pass problem, know, not, a, saying, not a movie I'm problem. I'm saying that's not a regal cinema problem necessarily. No, but you you're can't gonna alienate it. your movie pass users when you do that. You're doing it right now. You're pissing me off. I'm thinking about just going straight up cross gates. Go ahead, do it. I might. Good, another open seat for me. Yeah, uh, fine. So, sitting there by yourself. I could have, I could have done the cubicle show in the cube today, like I wanted to, because G Dog's not here, and I know he ain't gonna yell at me today. But you know what? I was like, it's not just my cubicle show. It's not the Bill cubicle show. It's a Bill and Scott cubicle show. And Scott was like, no, nah, I don't want to get an angry email, even though G Dog's not here. Oh, the same people that it. piss and moan and whine and complain about us being loud are still gonna piss and moan and whine and complain and send G Dog an email, and then he's gonna be like, I want to see you guys for a meeting at eleven o'clock on Monday morning and then Monday morning's gonna roll around at 11 o'clock and he's gonna stroll by and be like oh I'm busy we might not have this meeting today and then 40 minutes later we're like John are we ever gonna have this meeting he's gonna say I told you we weren't having the meeting even though that's not what he said so here we are on the best of you we compromise because that's what we do well, say hi to Jody by the way Jody thank you for thank you for putting <laughs> up with this well there's Jody when you come to ABC, she's uh, the lovely face you see up front. and uh, She will hand you your tickets if you win something. And also probably answer any questions that you have and maybe patch you through to the correct department that you need to pursue. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... Uh, Pete's over there, too, being all <laughs> silent-like. Pete, do you want to come over and do Pete, Pete's, uh, Pete's Pete. percentage of the show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here comes Pete's percentage. Pete's piece, piece. Ooh. But which piece is first? The I or the E? There he is. Yeah, so what's up, Pete? Let's get, <laughs> yeah. Let's get oh. intimate. There we are. I actually like the way your head fits in the Hey eyes. there. Okay, so um, we are... <laughs> we got and this is Pete's percentage. <laughs> it's a new feature where Pete lays down on us. The Pete pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, throw it up for the people. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> there we go. he said, hey, girl, what's up, what's up? I thought he was talking to Pete. Oh, man. He was probably talking to Jody. No, but, yo, for real, though, if somebody does walk in the lobby right now, that'd be glorious. Um, shout out Pete, too, right there. Oh, so, uh, hey, Dave, would you like to join the cubicle show? Sure. For David's domicile? <laughs> Hello? There he is. 
All right, so Google <laughs> put out a new console, allegedly, right? It's tentatively Shoot. called Yeti. That is the, uh, the, um, the code name Stop. for it, Stop. right? So I Do guess there's been Yeti. five Stop. sources that have confirmed this. Now, I'm not a big video game fan, so I'll... I, I am, don't which surprises really, me that I haven't heard about really this. really don't care about this too much. But I know a lot of people care about video games. First of all, it's like over a billion dollar industry and there's like two main powerhouses in it. So the fact that there's not like more is just surprising to me. And Google has all the options right here to do so. So I guess there's a... So maybe you can contest to this, right? So there's a lot of ongoing issues with video game streaming, especially uh, the effects of slow internet speed and when you have to download large chunks of gaming data and stuff like that. There's like... There's like issues that come yeah, there's with that, right? Issues. Yeah, there's sure. Well, they're saying with the Google one that will resolve the problem by allowing the cloud to pull all the weight of the downloading and the data transferring and everything. And it would also uh, say that it's going to be much more affordable, the console, and that it will also connect to the likes of like YouTube. So you'll be on YouTube, and as you're playing, if you need to get a guide or something, you is. just pop it up automatically, and you get a guide, and you can follow the guide through it and everything. So I know exactly what this is. It. Oh, yeah, that's the alleged controller. Here we go. Here's, your, here's another stay woke moment for you. This is all a ploy to kill Twitch. This is a YouTube live stream. If they're trying to hook you straight up into YouTube's live streaming service by way of this console or whatever platform it's going to be, they're just trying to bolster their YouTube stream numbers. Because YouTube itself, as a site, is eating itself alive and demonetizing every video. YouTube's in a bad place right now. Personally, I respect Google as a company, but they need to really freaking get on top of the YouTube ball because YouTube is horrible right now. Um, and I don't really care about your dumb console. I got a PlayStation, I got a PC, that's all I need. Now, if they do do that, will that direct connection to the internet be worth it? Because, like, when Xbox came out, they put out the revolutionary game, Halo. And mm -hmm. that got people to jump to Xbox because, everybody yeah. know, it was all about Xbox the PlayStation, Live, right? like, really good online uh, console game. So if they don't system. offer something revolutionary like that, like, connecting to the internet and YouTube is... we connect to the internet. That's not, like, revolutionary. Yeah, right. Like, do you think they'll have something to do? I would hope that Google would have another ace up their sleeve other than being like, oh, it's connected to the cloud. That sounds like something you tell somebody who doesn't know anything about how the internet works. Like, oh, it's... Do you ever, do you ever notice how, like, older people be like, oh, it's the cloud. How does the network? It's the cloud. And you say the cloud, and they go, oh. It's, it's, it's just a server that's not based on your own computer. I don't understand how this is different from a, a, an on, another online gaming server. And again, I don't know too much about this, but when you, I, you could go back and watch the video when you were talking about the cloud, I was kind of like, huh, what? What do you mean the cloud? Mm. Like I know what the cloud is. It's a server that it doesn't exist physically in your location. No game server exists physically in your location, bro. Okay, so hit him with the stay woke, please. And because you did just hit him with bars. Okay, Roseanne. Before we get into this meme Monday stuff, what other Roseanne comments do we got going in here? Um, we really don't have to hit Roseanne too much. You gotta you gotta get off the Wi-Fi piece. Yo, later, Jimmy man. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, anybody else I miss here? Andrea, what are we right about? Love Andrea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I see that. I see that you're right, but I don't, I don't, I didn't catch it in real time, yeah. so I'm not sure what you're referencing. Well, also, uh, with that. sometimes it's hard too to see what like you refer to, especially for in a transition of topic times, yeah. because we got like there's, there's like a, a little a slight delay, like a 30, 20, 30 second delay. Yeah. So let's know, Andrea. Appreciate it. Um, I thought Andrea tuned in last week during the uh, the, the stream in the morning. I remember. Uh, pretty sure that was her. All right. So Roseanne, right? Yeah. Roseanne. Let's just hit this real quick because it's not that important. Roseanne might be back on TV. She said uh, in a recent interview, quote, I've already been offered so many things. I almost already accepted one really good offer to go back on TV, and I might do it. And I just think it's funny because people are like, be like oh, my, she's, a, she's racist. My, she, she would never get a TV job. But you got to think, in entertainment, it's all about the bottom line, right? If people are talking, people are going to tune in to see what she's going to say or what she's going to do. That turns into revenue. And that's really, really – corporations – We've seen it time and time again. Look at Mel Gibson. Yeah. Corporations don't care about values, they care about dollars. And if they're going to make money off of it, they'll hire her. And frankly, I just find it fascinating. The number of times we have mentioned Roseanne in the last couple of months blows my mind. Here we are in 2018 and somehow Roseanne Barr is relevant again. Who, who the funk, right? This is like Derek Jeter playing for the Detroit Tigers freaking reality that we're in right now. Damn. 
Okay, so Andrea says the whole YouTube thing and the cloud, yeah. like, it doesn't Thank make you. any I, sense. I thought that's what you were referring to, but I just want to make sure. Yeah, you gotta love how they try to do it, but the problem is, is that most people don't understand, like, how things work, so they're gonna be like, oh, it oh. works with the cloud? The, 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 the same thing that goes with my iPhone? Well, yeah. Yes. Yo, <laughs> dude. The Okay, so let's get into our memes. So you got the first one, right? Um, I mean, or do I go you, first? Why don't you go first? I feel like we just transition now. Okay. So mine is so on Drake's uh, album "Scorpion" on the song "Emotionless," when he addresses his son, he says the line somewhere along the lines of, you know, I'm only paraphrasing here, that I wasn't hiding my son from the world; I was hiding the world from my son. You know, I burn my hand on, on these bars. These bars, right? These bars. Well, anyways, this meme surfaces like the next morning. I already see it going around. It goes, Bay, you never post me on social media. Why are you hiding me? Me? I'm not hiding you from the world. I'm hiding the world from you. <laughs> the picture really makes it. Uh, it looks like that that kid, the little kid with the mug, who's like drinking, drinking, the, like drinking out of the coffee mug. You know what I'm talking about? I, I can't remember what his name is, but it's that notorious yeah. picture. Was like, yeah, when he like his mom or like like they, they just he was just big again during like Christmas. Like, yeah, right. Yeah, when yeah, your you mom gives you the best Christmas present yeah, ever. She and said you weren't gonna get yeah. it. But that's what that reminds me of. So good. All right, so which meme one we go? So to first? go to um the two. First one you said go to two. Is, okay. Yeah, there we go. This one, this isn't a meme, but it says Drake is literally the rupee core for men. I actually looked up how to pronounce that. That's that girl that wrote that Milk and Honey book, which is like seriously basic, like incredibly low effort poetry that I would barely classify as poetry, but it's like a bestseller and girls just eat that stuff up. So I think it's kind of funny. I actually, I wanted to talk about this on my show. I couldn't say, I think I quote tweeted and I was like, oh, you mean like overrated trash that everyone loves for some reason? I can't say that on the air because I can't say that Drake is overrated trash on the air. I don't actually believe that Drake is overrated trash, but like the comparison is there, like with the Instagram caption poetry, you know, like girls will take this Rupee Core stuff and like post it on Instagram being like, oh my God, it's so deep. And one of the things was like, and yet she's still here living. And I'm like, oh wow, really? You, you're a survivor. What, like that's that's one of her poems. I, I'm I'm missing a word or two here. So I should have screenshot it. I'm a give, yeah. give the, this freaking really new wave of poetry that that passes for poetry is pathetic. And the milk and honey book I've read some of it is pathetic. I'm sorry. If you like it, I don't know what to say to you. I have I could I could write. I'm gonna write a poetry book. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm being showered with mints. Yeah. It's like a sign from the Lord J. Scott. Yeah, I hope somebody uh, cleans them up. And his mint bowl. Helmet. Like the uh, cleaning people. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, because they don't look that. Um, All right, so let's get to this other meme here. And, uh, this is the here. real deal. This is the sauce right here. Okay, so this comes from a Twitter moment that's a couple weeks old, but I remembered it while I was on vacation, and I had to read the whole thing to my friends. And so what I want to do is... Re Jay, we can't see you. We yeah, can't, they can't see what you're doing. You got it. You got to come in a little bit tighter. I promise I will clean up mess. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. I probably promise will... I clean up mess. Yeah, I would stop that, Jay. You no, have to long sesame chicken. That's not right. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's not right at all. Like, you probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> all right, so let's continue on. Okay. So the uh, this this moment was why Charles Dickens was like Avril Lavigne's Skater Boy. So this, this guy, this historian slash comedian, starts off in the stream. Skater Boy is now a 39-year-old father of three. He and Avril split in 2014. He still thinks about the girl who did ballet he used to know, but he's unsure what her married name is and can't find her on Facebook. He now produces albums for Korean pop bands and misses performing. So he's got this imaginary scenario established in his head. And he goes, I realize this is ridiculous, but when I read about Charles Dickens having his heart broken by Maria Beadnell, but her dad didn't think Dickens was good enough, and so he married Catherine instead, I think of Skater Boy, successful superstar but sad Skater Boy. Charles Dickens was Skater Boy. By the way, Dickens pined for Maria, ballet girl, for over 20 years. She was the model for one of his loveliest characters, Dora. And then, after all that time, she wrote to him, and he was so excited. All the old feels came back. He was now a superstar. They communicated by letter, and she was like, hey, how are you? And he was like, I'm amazing. How are you? I bet you're amazing. And she was like, er, I'm middle-aged and not so hot anymore. And he was like, no way, you'll always be hot to me. And so they agreed to meet. And they meet in 1855. 
And she's a, oh my god. She's a middle-aged woman, and he's like, WTF, you're meant to be hot. I thought you were over this already. <laughs> There's still more. And she's like, oh but two god. decades have passed. And Dickens is like, good day to you, random woman, and he's brutal. And he writes about her again as Flora and Little Dora, and they basically never speak again. Dickens has basically been in love with the memory of what could have been the sexy ghost of Christmas future. And then he meets the reality, and he's instantly disappointed. So I think about Skater Boy sometimes. Does he find Ballet Girl? And if he does, is he gutted to find the cute ballerina of 2002 is now a tired suburban housewife? I hope not. I'm hoping Skater Boy is less of a dick than Dickens. And I just, I just read that and I'm like, yo, someday I hope to be as hard as Charles Dickens to find some random hoe who broke my heart back in the day and be like, yo, you're fat and ugly now and I am doing so well. And that would just, that would just make me so happy. Charles Dickens was the man, apparently. I didn't know, I didn't know that. I have no idea what to even say. Oh, about. man. Anyways, with all that being said, so that's it for the season Three premiere because here you go one can never be too woke. Is that the motto? Oh my That's God. the motto. Of season Yo. three. One can never be too woke. It's the motto. Yolo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. With that being said, we'll be back at it tomorrow. Where you can catch the us on the Facebook page Monday through Thursday at ten thirty Eastern time. Because that's the only time zone that matters. One. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show! That's what I'm talking about, boy! Bill and Scott Cubicle show. Yeah? Bill and Scott Cubicle show. Yeah! Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Not a rectangle show. Not a triangle show. Not a pyramid show. It's a cubicle show. Bill and Scott cubicle show. Yeah. Bill and Scott cubicle show. Yeah. Cubicle show. <laughs> 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 we just got one. Boy. <laughs>